let's move on to the uh, topics for this week. Um, so E3 is happening from June 14th to 16th. Um, so let's talk about some of the games, uh, our most anticipated games for the year. Um, so let's go around the table. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll start. I'll give you guys a chance to think of your... to come up with uh, your game. But my most anticipated game of, uh, of the, like 2016-2017 has to be Mass Effect Andromeda. That game is... Mass Effect, that whole series, is one of my top three games of all time. And I can't wait for this new series of Mass Effect to come out. And I can't wait to see what they're, what new content they're going to release for this game. Whatever previews or gameplay footage, I'll take anything right now in E3 coming up. Now, is, isn't like the actual full-on lore isn't out, but isn't this like a hundred years after, or something around that nature? Because they um, they they've rebuilt the uh, the uh, the warp gates. What do they call them? Ah. Uh, sh- Dude, what are they called? Relay, yeah. Mass relays. Yeah, yeah. Mass, mass relays. relays. There we go. And, 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 Space and, guns. Right, and the mass relays are huge. So you know, a couple years after wouldn't be believable, right? But yeah, the mass relays they also have to. Mm-hmm. They don't just shoot you somewhere. They have to be connected to another relay that receives. So they have to build that one and the one on the other side. Is that how they work? Yes, yeah. that's how they work. Uh, whenever right. you see the Normandy in the game, it always shoots from one mass relay to another one. Well, in in the area of yeah, within the general area, like a, a kilometer <laughs> or so. You know. It never shoots it just into space. It always shoots it to Why another. Shoot you into a black hole. <laughs> well, imagine imagine if that's how space travel worked. It's just like we have a gun around Earth, just in orbit. And then we would just load your ship like a bullet into that gun, and we just fire your ship out into the <laughs> <another> galaxy. <laughs> I played a Technically, lot of Mass th- Effect. That would be the most effect. That, that would be the most efficient way of like getting someone up to speed <clears throat> as fast as possible, right? Um, so you would save a lot of time. One thing is, that though, way. in the universe, whenever they find a mass relay, they never use it until they find the one that connects to it for whatever reason. Aliens. Because you don't know where it's going to go. Yeah, you don't know if you're going to open up the uh, Rachni, which are like these, um, an insect race, a space-faring insect race that just went on a huge war against them. And yeah, but that doesn't make any sense, do though, that. because you can't, in order to get to another solar system without the mass relay, it would take you like 100 yeah, years they or something still have, to travel. Uh, they still have FTL, and it's relatively fast. The mass relays are just a thousand times faster. So it's just weird to me. They're well, like, we're going to sit on this ship for, like, decades. Like, it's one of the reasons Francis. they don't find humanity. Francis. Like, in the moon. What? Would, would, you, would you honestly... Okay, if you had the stakes of humanity literally on a whim on opening a warp gate, you know, of some sort, would you really risk the biscuit? That's Send the, the probe, thing. then. I don't understand. It, it humans- opens it. It opens it, period. No matter what you do, it opens it both ways. Then, then if you don't like it, destroy it. It's what like if you invincible. can't? What if you oh, can't? come on now. You're telling me that thing is indestructible? Just get your fleet and start shooting at it and blow it up. Blowing up a mass relay is like a multi-trillion nuclear warhead going off. You're making assumptions here. You don't know. No, no, this is lore, man. I mean, the number you know, you is know. is a lot larger, but yes, it's lore. Blowing those things up are devastating. Relays, but you need to slam like a huge asteroid with engines in it and actually destroy it. So, not just here, let's go destroy it. We need to have a plan. It's going to take like months to destroy it. Yeah, but it's doable. So you know, also, I don't have a big deal here. Send a probe through, just opens and then have up their mass relay. That's why there's the first contact war? All right. Um, so, um, Nick, what's your uh, what's your most uh, anticipated game for E three twenty sixteen or for the next uh, year? Oh, most anticipated might actually be Zelda. Zelda, me, yeah, the what's, new Zelda uh, game. What's it called? Zelda. Is it? I don't, is it a reboot? I don't, I don't think Main it has Zelda. I, I don't think I don't think they have the subtitle yet. Uh, 
Um, so is it for the uh, the NX or is it for the no? Wii U? It's still current. It's still for the Wii U. It's not the. They have another Zelda title that'll come out on the NX that they're already working on. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the flagship or one of the launch titles. But uh, currently, uh, this will be the Wii U. And so it's you, just, you don't I've, don't know the title yet. I don't like. I'm trying to remember being revealed at if E3 they or something. had it. I can't remember if they actually released that full title or not. Yeah, they're just calling it Legend of Zelda. There's not a bad. I just oh. Legend of Zelda. Yeah, so you're Legend of Zelda. It looks like it's coming out 2017. Could it so, be a reboot? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If they're calling it the Legend of Zelda, isn't right. it a reboot then? Yeah, it would be a reboot. I, or they, they may just not have the subtitle yet. Uh, no, no, I would all be for a reboot. Like that would be awesome. Yeah. Right. So that, I mean, regardless, awesome, it's just it's. Yeah. Hey, actually, it says that on the Wikipedia article, it says it's developing for the Wii U and the NX. They'll probably they'll probably do like what they did with. Um, uh. Twilight Princess, where they released on the GameCube and the Wii at the same time, but they are developing a Legend of or, or a Zelda game that's going to be purely on the Nintendo NX. But mm-hmm. they said they're not going to have any NX news at E3 this year. So, no, I've actually never played through like a real Zelda game except for like the NES and SNES versions. Yeah, I never finished them. I always get lost. Those ones were some of them were really difficult, and it, it took a lot of water temple. A lot of makes, research I guess. makes me feel weird because I watched a. Um, you guys ever seen Games on Quick? It's a video game stream they do for like a week for a charity, like January and over the summer. Speed run after speed run, yeah. There was mm-hmm. a blind guy who speed ran. What was it? Ocarina of Time, I think. And he's blind. What? He speed ran it in under two hours. Uh, exp- elaborate so basically in the game uh, every single terrain has a different sound that's how he gets around is he just hears and it's like oh this is where I go and it was amazing to watch him get all these speed run tricks that I can't do and he's blind so when you say terrain it means like when he's walking yeah, when like you're like walking on dirt like when you're swimming in water right right so using that all those sounds, you can tell which area he's in. Weird. Setting up tricks, like walk three steps this direction. So what's your that excuse is, for not finishing the game? This is really weird. I well, he has to have someone teach him the Impressive. game, and everyone speed runs games. Sometimes they don't even play the game the right way the entire way through. They just pick up the game, learn the speed run way, and then just play it like that. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I, is, but you know what? Is there is there a right way to play a game? Well, I mean, is like if you're breaking the game? game and going through walls, it's it's it, you can say it's doesn't matter what way you play the game, but it's not the intended way. Like they don't play the game the right. intended way as made by the developers. So, I guess in Ocarina of Time, there's a lot of walls. Um, ha- walls. So have you guys played a lot of these Zelda games? Walls? Yeah. I think the last Zelda game I played was on the the DS, like the regular DS. I haven't played like all like the three DS ones, um, but most of the console ones I played. There's there's a really cool thing with the DS version where it was really confusing when I was playing it the first time. But basically, they're like you you have some like parchment or something, and then it's like you have to copy it, and you're like, how the fuck do I copy it? And like you you try to like go into the menus, and it's like. You're going, like, you leave, and then you come back into the area, and it still says you have to copy it. So what you actually had to do was you take your DS, you close it, and then you open it again, and you copy it from the bottom screen to the top screen. That's how you actually copied the, the thing, the, the piece of paper. A lot of weird <laughs> item things in Zelda. Isn't that fucking awesome, like, how they came up with that? That's amazing. It is kind of a gimmicky thing, but, like, I, I love that. It was, it was an enjoyable puzzle. It's like how a game uses, you know, the system's mechanic to do something. I think one of the things that got me the most lost was using the time travel in the screen of time. 
I don't. I didn't know where like to use it. A bunch of different what? songs you play on it, and they cause things to happen. Like the song of storm causes a storm. Yeah, that was. Uh, Try to figure that out. Fun fact about Ocarina of Time: when they came out with the remastered version for the, they came out with a GameCube and a Wii, the original Wii version of it, and the GameCube and Wii versions were inverses of each other, along whatever axis. So like, if Lake Hyrule was to your left in one of the versions, it was to the right on the map on the other. Version. Nice, nice. So like, there'd be times like where I'd be like, because I play both of them, and I'll be like, oh. I need to go here. That's to the left. And like you'd be running for like 30 minutes and then realize you went totally the wrong way. Real nice. I, I don't know why they did it too to this day. I don't know. Oopsies. I, I don't know if they did it like if it was like some part of the conversion or whether it was just them being a holes or what. So a wrench and all those speed runs to just put it on the right side. <laughs> All right, so um, that was Zelda, Legend of Zelda, for coming up for the um, the Wii U and the NX. Oh, um, is the NX going to be called the NX, or is that a code, na code name for uh, something something else that they're going to name in the future? Well, we don't know. All right. <laughs> I mean, considering they enough. went with Wii U before, I wouldn't be surprised if they if it's called the NX. The Wii them. You know what? The Wii and the Wii U were really stupid names, and um, Would like, to like what is it? Ten years later, it's still really stupid. So go Japanese people! All right. Yeah, but uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, like I was, I was working at GameStop when those things came out, man. And compared to like the uh, to the you know Sony and Microsoft and their console, consoles, people went absolutely crazy over the Nintendo Wii. I mean, we we yeah. received threats, physical threats, over Nintendo Wii's. The that we original didn't have. Wii outsold both the PlayStation Three and the mm -hmm. Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Like it won that generation of console wars yeah. by a lot. Yeah, but by the end of that generation, how many Wii's were still actually in use, and, and how many Wii's were like under your bed or in storage? And, a lot were still in use. It's just the Wii the Wii U wasn't compared to like the PlayStation upgrade, or Xbox. And so they switched. Well, that's the problem is all the, all the, all the 360 and PS3 people upgraded. Whereas the Wii people were like, why should I upgrade? It's pretty much the same system, just a fancy controller for the Wii U. So it, no, like, I'm, just, I'm just, I was just saying that like the, uh, there's not that many games to play on the Wii right. and people ended up like retiring that their boxes after. Um, it's all about branding, I guess. No, it's all about licensing proper well, games right. for your system, like but, uh, exclusives and stuff. But let let me ask you this, right? If if you are if you're if you're winning the console war, does it really matter? Yeah, because for every game sold, you usually take a profit. Sure, and but I mean, they they destroyed like like uh, Nick said, they destroyed the console wars. They like, they dominated it. Yeah, but look at them now. Look at Nintendo now. Yeah, because because they won that generation. The next right. generation, they lost horribly. Mm -hmm. Like straight up, pretty much weren't even in the running. Well, because their hardware is not powerful enough. So game developers who are pushing out, you know, triple A titles that are pushing the gra graphics envelope. They couldn't even release their games on the Wii, even if they wanted to. They would have to spend millions of dollars just to dumb down their textures and everything just to get it on the Wii U. True, true, true. So that's that's where that's where uh, Nintendo lost out on a lot of, I think, potential sales there because I want to play. I don't know. What's a good example? Mass Effect. It's not on the fucking Wii. What am I supposed to do there? So. Their next console, are they going to push it to where it's next gen? Mm, no. From what I've read, no. I think they'll go with a regular controller and not a Wii. Well, the Wii U technically did. The Wii and the Wii U technically do have regular controllers, right? You could buy separate. Yeah. Like I never used the stuff. Wii U, but isn't that like a huge controller with a screen in the middle? It's like yes. playing. It's like playing a tablet that has buttons on it. 
which yeah, that's a huge I love. Controller. I love the Wii U controller and mm -hmm. the possibilities of what you could design with that thing to interact with the games. I think is amazing, um, especially with the whole VR, AR push going on right now. You could do some really cool things with that. But again, like Hello said, it's on a system that no one wants to develop for. So, yeah, mostly the the popular games on the Wii have generally been Nintendo properties, right? Like Mario and like Super Smash Bros. and those types of games. Um. But when it comes to third-party development, like what third-party games are really popular on the Wii? Can you think of any? Probably the Lego games. All right, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good call. Um, because Lego games don't really require the uh, intense graphics processing power as right. other games. Makes sense. And uh, Lego games also target a uh, younger audience. I'd say. I mean, I, I've played some of them, and I, I, they're enjoyable, but. I'm in my 30s, so not really targeting. They're not really t targeting me, my demographic. You're, you're never too old to play with Legos, Francis. dude. <laughs> no, but as you get older, you want to play with like you know Technics. Uh, you know what you need to I've go got back. a Lego sword hanging on my wall. I'll build Legos. I need a. I have a Lego X-wing sitting on top of my desk. Oh yeah. I was never. I, uh, <laughs> I never had enough money to buy those expensive sets when I was a kid. Oh yeah, they're expensive, they're like hundreds of dollars. That was like yeah. that was like my Christmas was I would get like nothing but Legos, which it'd still only be like four or five sets, but Yep. Mm -hmm. That was like my Christmas every year. It was awesome. It was the best thing, yeah. Gift that keeps on giving. We have a store called Mindstorm in Canada. I think it's Mindstorm or Mind something. That they basically sell these like children's thinking toys and Legos one of them. I always used to go into that store, even during, even during high school, I would drive to that store and just walk through it and be like, these are fucking amazing Lego sets. They, they had like the, um, the Lego Star Destroyer, which was like, what, 200 or $300? And it was took a me a week giant to Star Destroyer. Oh, you actually bought it? You actually got that thing? I bought, well, there's like a whole bunch of sets that are Star Destroyers, but I bought one of them and the thing's like two feet mm -hmm. long. That took forever to build. Man, I would have loved to get, have, it's freaking, that's freaking amazing. And I actually went online and, and searched it recently, or like within the last six months or maybe a year. And the like that original Star Destroyer is actually really expensive now because it was there aren't that many out there, and you could buy, find them on eBay, and they cost like a thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, they always come out with like a different impressive. version of every few years. Yeah, every but few I have years there's one like of the a new Star more recent ones. I built like um, an ad at. That actually walks because there's a motor in it. That one was actually pretty cool to build, especially because you can are, see it walking. Are you buying them now, or did you? No, get that them was as a few kid? years ago, like three, five, or six years ago. How old were you back then? Like, are you 16 now? <laughs> no, I'm 20. Okay, so three I years ago, you now. were what, like 16 buy or 17? What? You were like 16 or 17 back I then. I was like 14 when I built that one. 14 or 15. That, that's more than I was, three years ago. Well, that's five I years was ago. 28 years old when I bought that X Wing. That's mm -hmm. about, uh, the one from wow. the new movie. They're expensive. Oh, the one from the new movie. And okay. I'm no pissed. one's buying had, me Legos for Christmas. They had, like, <laughs> they had like an ultimate collector's version of the X Wing that I got when I was younger. And of course, like, I was a kid and I played with them constantly. So, like, Totally You're like destroyed. crashed and blown up a million times. Half the pieces probably missing. <laughs> Don't have the instructions um, anymore. But like to have that and actually like put it together and like seal it and like use it as like a model would have been amazing. But no, yeah. nope. I, I can't bring myself to destroy Legos in such a way because then you have to rebuild it. You yeah, but that's like a, that's like half the fun is the building phase. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. When we were kids, we just like opened the packaging and started playing with it. Like I have. I have maybe like two dozen like Ninja Turtles and Transformers and more and like that stuff now if I had the first gen like Transformers those things are all worth so much fucking money man <laughs> if I just kept them in their packaging and like all my Ninja Turtles original Ninja Turtles action figures there was like hundreds of them like hundreds of variations of the Ninja Turtles they sold if I just keep that kept that stuff in like the original packaging it would have been worth so much money right now damn Think about it, you could be retired right now. 
Well, okay, it wasn't worth like a million (laughs) dollars, but like you would probably be able to sell like individual uh, like Ninja Turtles for like twenty or thirty each, right? Right. Compared to what you bought them for, so it's it's actually like many increased many many times in value. And you know, there there for the, the action figures, there were like hundreds of variations of Ninja Turtles, and there was four of them too. So they all came in like different weapons, different costumes, and all types of stuff. And there was like the techno the technodrome or whatever it's called. I never actually got that because I, I never I never got any good toys as a kid. I'm so sad. <laughs> I never got the Lego sets I wanted. I never got the good shit. So, Francis, you know you. You said that you know whenever you you wanted to get into Legos and everything, but you really didn't have that option. What about like uh, Minecraft? Did you get into Minecraft at all? Minecraft as in the game? Yeah. No. No Minecraft, the pen and paper strategy game. <laughs> I mean, I was. <laughs> well, I was wondering, like, what? Are, like, is there something else? But no, I was. I mean, Minecraft came out like what five years ago. It's mine. I, I still play I like, Minecraft. Like, I was playing Minecraft yesterday. It, the, there's so many mods sure. out for the game that it's it's player created content to watch. Yeah, the player created content's mm-hmm. gonna keep that game going for like a decade, unless like more stuff comes out. That's the new version of Minecraft, which is probably not gonna happen too soon. Minecraft two. But there's all Minecraft kinds of things that people make crazy things. Like going to space, going to the moon. There's mm-hmm. like pirate ships they can drive around. I, I've played like vanilla Minecraft before. And it's fun, but I've never played with all the mods and stuff. So yeah. it's good to play it on vanilla first before you start modding it, and you especially want to know what you're modding so you don't break your game. Mm-hmm. 